in today's lecture, we're going to make a fair amount of use of Logic Lab, which is available for free at axelsoftware.it slash en slash Logic Lab. Um, and so if you want, you can download it. It, it does require you to make a, a free account with them. And it's rather a large program, about 340 megabytes there. But if you wish, you can download that if you have a Windows computer and run it there. When you start up Logic Lab, you're given this window here. You can go up to File, New Project, give a name to the project. Let's call this Motor Control. You can put it in whatever the uh, folder associated with this project in any directory. And then it's important to choose your target to be VPLC1, the virtual PLC, simulated PLC. These are various physical PLC. Bonus you can add uh, an interface with, but we're doing the virtual PLC built in. I click OK, and here's your programs and generated. Two important windows over here, project and resources. If you don't see those, you can go to view, tool windows, and you can turn them on and off. Let's go to resources and click on this local IO mapping. So these are the 16 digital inputs, 16 digital outputs, four analog inputs, four analog outputs that are simulated with the virtual PLC. So let's have one digital input be a start signal, start button, and the next be a stop signal. Then let's go down to the first digital output, DOL0, and let's put in the variable name motor. So this output will be the signal that turns the motor on or off. Good idea to save after you make changes. And now we can go to project, we can compile this, or you can just press F7. Look down here, no warnings, no errors. Okay, shouldn't have any, but uh, and now let's go to, uh, if we were connecting to a physical PLC, we would go to online and set up communication and connect. But we're using a virtual PLC, we go to debug simulation mode. And here that opens up the virtual PLC. So let's look at this window there. This uh, here has these buttons to toggle the human machine interface, the simulated PLC. Uh, this, this button toggles views of the various variables. We don't need that. So we can, we can run this or we can stop it. Okay, very well. Okay, now let's go back over here to project, right click on motor control project, add a new program. We're gonna make this a ladder diagram and then we're gonna transition to function block diagram. Let's call this LD0 for the initialization program. And we're gonna assign it to the init task. And here it is. So it gives you a skeleton with one contact and one coil. We don't need the contact. Select that, hit delete, and then go over and double click on this coil. And so we're going to set the motor variable initially to zero. Put in the name motor here and choose a negated coil. You notice the slash there, right? That's the symbol that shows this is going to give you the not operation. So this is hardwired in, so it's ex excited, energized. And, but then because it's a negated coil, that makes the motor variable become zero or false. Save that, right? You can always press the F7 to file, okay. Now select motor control project again, add a new program, ladder diagram, let's call this LD1. Assign it to the fast task. This is the repetitive part. And for now, let's just have the contact be the start button and the coil be the motor circuit. Save everything, press F7, no errors, press F5. It asks you to want a cold restart, yeah, that's fine. Open our window up and start it running. So now when we press the start button, the motor uh, coil should turn on. When we unpress the start button, it should turn off. Let's go back over here now, select the start contact and right click. 
And let's put a new contact after that. Double click on that. Let's make this the stop button and a negated contact or so normally closed contact. Let's see how that works. F7, F5, start it running. Okay, so we press start, we press stop, then it opens this connection and turns everything off. Very well. Now let's go back here, like start, make a new parallel contact. So this is going to be an or operation to connect in parallel, and then this is an and operation. Double we'll click here and make this the motor signal. Okay, so this is a latching operation. When you press start and the motor variable becomes true, then that opens, uh, that, that causes current to be able to flow or a signal to be able to flow through this motor contact and then through the normally closed stop contact. Even if I let off the start button, motor will continue uh, to be energized. Let's check that out. Bang, F7, F5, and let's see. Okay, so we press, so I gotta get it started to run here, running. Press start, motor turns on. If I unpress start, it stays on because of this latching operation. Now if I press stop, the motor stops, and then I gotta restart it. Okay, good. So that's how we would do that simple circuit in ladder diagram. Let's go back over to task here. So notice Anish has the LD0 program under it and FAST has uh, a built-in main that you don't play, play with. That just keeps count of how many times you've gone through the FAST loop, FAST task, uh, and our LD1 program. So select LD0, right-click, exclude from build. That's gonna hide this without destroying the code. Go back up here to motor control project, add a new program. And now we're going to select function block diagram. Let's call this BD0 and assign it to a niche. So it's going to replace our LD0, which just set the motor variable to a value of false. So here is the workspace for function block diagram. Notice there's no uh, rung here. Right click in that window, new object. We're going to have operator and move. So this is when then we can left click wherever we want that we can move it down so this is just an assignment operator move move this value to that variable we double click over here on the output we can choose the variable we want motor is one we're going to choose and over here we want an input value so let's double click on that let's put the value false if we want we can rearrange things okay so what this this should do want to you can make this a little smaller um this should just set the motor variable to be false uh it, when you initialize the program let's see if that works save everything f7 f5 restart and run and it yes it turned off the motor value even though it was previously set to on so you can set it on turn it off set it on you shut it off notice it stays on here for this of course in a, in a real plc you de-energize the plc everything would shut off uh, and we start it and it initializes and turns the motor variable off okay stop that now let's go back to fast task ld1 exclude that from build okay that's where we have this operation now we're going to implement this kind of with logic gates this is start or motor and not stop is equal to motor. All right, so let's add a new program. Call this FBD1 and add it to the fast task. Okay, so here we have our program space. So we want to implement this, uh, this circuit operation. Motor is equal to start or motor and not stop. Okay, so or gate first, right click, 
new object operator. We want or that wherever we want it. That's going to be start or motor and not stop. So we need to and there and then we need not stop okay so um different vendors have different sets of uh, operators logic lab does not have a not specific not operation we can use an exclusive or build one so let's go in here and have it one input be the uh, stop. We want to negate this. So here, let's double click the second input. We're going to do exclusive or between stop and true, right? Because the exclusive or of one in any variable is the negation of the variable. If the variable is zero, one exclusive or zero is true, is one. Uh, whereas this stop variable is one, one exclusive or one is false. Okay, and we want to add those two. So now we need to go and uh, wire this up. So we can go to view, toolbars. Um, I'm sorry, toolbars, not windows, toolbars. The function block diagram bar. Give you these various tools here. Here is the wiring action tool. Click on that. And we can connect this output to this input. Output to that input. Now our final output should be the motor signal. So here, motor. Okay, and so that should implement start or motor and not stop is the value of motor. Let's see if that works. Save that. Our fast. Loop and can we've hidden the LD1 and the FBD1 should replace that now. So F7, F5, start it running. Source OK and connected. OK, so if I press start, motor should turn on. Unpress that, it stays latched in because of this path. If I press stop, it stops. Right, so that's our first function block diagram program. Now we can compare these two, the ladder diagram and the function block diagram. Uh, and you can see here that at least my preference would be for this. I think this is clearer. This looks more like what you'd have with logic gates. So generally, certainly for small to medium sized projects, almost always the ladder diagram is the best choice. But there could be certain cases, especially when you work with a lot of analog values, the function block diagram may be more effective. And as a uh, more advanced kind of uh, task, you can, you can actually make a new function block and base it on some other function block or modify those. And it's a little more advanced. designing an industrial process it's always a good idea to build in safety checks a very common safety check the watchdog timer here's the idea so say you have a start signal start some process and then the process should run a certain predetermined amount of time and then stop. So if it doesn't stop within that predetermined amount of time, then that could be an indication that there's some problem in the process and you need to they set off an alarm so that somebody comes, checks it. First of all, it should turn off the process and then set an alarm. So here's what we can do. When the process is running,
should run a timer. And the process runs longer than the timer set period, then we should start an alarm and also turn off the process. Call the watchdog timer. Very simple approach, but effective approach to just ensuring that uh, something didn't go horribly wrong with the process and somebody's process has stopped and somebody's alerted. Go take a look at it. Okay, let's make a new project. Call it Watchdog. And we'll start off with the ladder diagram. So compare it to the function block diagram. So in this project, we're going to have a process signal that turns a process on or off a run button and a done signal and an alarm signal. So let's go over to resources, local IO mapping. Our inputs are gonna be a run signal. And there will be a done signal when the process is completed. And output will be process control signal. And there will be an alarm. inputs to outputs, digital and digital output. Let's go back to project, add a new program. Let's do this as a ladder diagram, LD0. Initialization. And we're just gonna give initial values to variables. So let's delete that contact. And we want to have over here process be negated, set to false or zero. And we would also like the alarm to be turned off. So let's right click here and put a new coil next to it. Make that also a negated coil with alarm as the label. So this is going to set both process and the alarm variables to zero. Save, just check, all right, F7, compile, yeah, works fine. Okay, so that's in our init. Now let's make a new program, put LD1, find it to fast. And here's our main program. So we want the process to start if we press the run button and the alarm is not sounding. If the alarm is sounding, the process should be stopped and not be able to be, be started. So let's make this run, the run signal. Let's add a new contact. Now, we, of course, if the done signal is true, we want to shut the process off. So it's done and make that negated so it's normally closed. If done becomes true, then this opens up. And let's add a new contact. We also don't want the process to run if the alarm is true, if the alarm is on. So make that negated so it's normally closed. So if the alarm is off and the done signal is false, then if you press the run button, process will begin. All right, let's, uh, let's save that and file no warnings, no errors, hit F5. Um, Project. We got to set up, sorry, go into simulation mode first. Sorry about that. Now we can press F5. Cold restart. And here is our interface. And so we start. We don't need those. Done should be uh, false. Alarm should be false because uh, the done button is not pushed here. And so if I press run, everything runs. If I undo it, then it doesn't run. If I press done, then it also shuts off. Now the alarm and the run signal are both, are, here's the process signal and the run and the alarm signal right there. So we didn't get any alarm here. So what 
under what conditions are we going to get an alarm if the process takes longer than expected? All right, so the way we're gonna do this is open up another rung, right click here and new network after, second rung. And we're gonna run a timer here and if that timer ex times out, then we're gonna use that to turn on the alarm, stop the process, right? Because it's gone too long. So we should start the timer if the process is running. So double click there, process, uh, and you contact, it's not done. Click there, negate that, not done. If the process is running and it's not done, then we want the timer to be running. So right click here, new block. We want a T on timer. I give it a name. T on one here. And there is our input and output. And then here's the um, our preset time. Let's double click there. Let's make that 5,000 milliseconds. In practice, it'd probably be a lot longer than this, but just so that it runs reasonably fast. And so if that runs for five seconds, then we want this output will be energized and we want that to turn on the alarm. So over here we have alarm. Now, let's hit okay. Let's save this, right? So remember this is in the fast uh, here. Fast task. F7, F5, oops, we got to uh, go online. F5, and now let's see. So start that. If we say start, turns on. Now let it go 1,000, 2, 3,000, 4,000, 5. The alarm doesn't seem to turn on. Ah, uh, you saw a little little blip there. Okay, what happened? So, right, remember this fast task runs repeatedly. And if we set the value of alarm, that's only going to be maintained um, while this timer is energized. Um, and so when we go through the next next loop, Um, here, if the alarm is on, that'll turn the process off, but that'll turn this off, which will then, the output will also go off and that'll turn the alarm off. So the alarm will only ring for one cycle of the fast loop, turn the process off. We want the alarm to stay on. So here's how we do that. We double click here. We make this a set coil. That means once this is set, it won't be unset unless we specifically give it a reset signal. Okay. So let's see if this fixes our problem. F7, five, and let's run now. And after five seconds, cross should turn off and the alarm turns on. And now it stays off, even if I do done. All right, so this is set up this, unless I had an explicit reset or I reset my PLC, turn it off and back on. Okay, so if I the process finishes in less than five seconds, all right, so done is true in less than five seconds, no problem. But if I go and exceed five seconds, it turns off, the alarm sounds, and we're locked out until we restart it. Now we could, if we wanted to, somewhere have put a reset signal to the alarm, maybe another button that would override and restart. Let's take a look. Uh, you know, what would be involved there. We could just add a new, new branch if we wanted to and have a new input, you know, here after vector resources, have a new input done. Let's call this RST for reset. Go back to our project, LD1. This would be RST. Reset, and we want that to turn the alarm off. So we want 
reset here. Okay, so we added that. 7, F5, start. And now the third input is reset. As the alarm goes off, we can hit reset. And now we can restart things. Okay. So uh, we can continue to modify a program by adding additional rungs as desired. Now let's do the same thing in function block diagram. So let's first do our init here. We're setting process and alarm both to false. We'll do that ladder diagram program from the build and add a new program function block diagram. We'll call it F E zero. Add this to the ish task. And here we want to just set process to be equal zero. Um, process and alarm to be zero. Okay, so and before as we did before we do operator, we use the move and so we want the process be false logic zero. There's one assignment network. Do the same thing now for alarm. So that should replace our LD zero. And now let's uh, exclude the LD1 and let's add a new program. Block diagram FBD1 fast. Okay, so we want to implement the same thing we had before for the LD1. We want the process to be true if run is true and done and alarm are both false. How could we do that? So we need two not operators. We implement with an XOR. Um, now, actually, there's a little bit smarter way we could do this. So let's look at not done and not alarm. When is that true? When they're both zero. So that would be true if we negated the or. If we said not done or alarm, that's the same as not done and not alarm. That's one of De Morgan's theorems. Okay, so we could save ourselves a little bit of space here in doing an or. Gonna have his in done an alarm a little bit. We're going to negate that. We'll or that with true. Why are this? And then we're going to, then finally we're going to and that. So that implements this. Not done and not alarm is the same as the nor of done at or alarm. And then, and then we also have to have run. So we do now uh, operator and. And so we're going to, this maybe here, here the run signal. wire together and finally our output now process signal
go. Okay, so now we got to control the timer. So open up a new um, network here. And for the control of the timer, right, we want, what do we do on our LD1? Process and not done, that starts the timer. Timer sets the alarm. Okay, so we want process and not done. So do the not done first. Operator, we're going to use the XOR to implement the not. Done. This will be done, and we do an XOR of that with with true logic one, and that produces not produces not done, and so we want that to be ended with the process, right? So not done in process. Now we do an and. process if you like you can you can pull this out so all of the variables are kind of lined up if you prefer okay. so that's going to now control the t on we go up over here we want a new function block t on okay. t on and we're going to wire the output of this AND operation. It's going to turn on the clock. Here we're going to put in preloaded time of 5,000 milliseconds, five seconds. And the output then of that timer should set the alarm. We got to do a set type uh, coil effectively. Right, we don't have coils that come at text here, so how do we do that? New operator. We look down here for S for set. There's a little set block. And so the output of that is going to be the alarm. We can wire this up. And that should implement what we're trying to do. Let's uh, save this. Press F7. No errors. F5. Cool to restart. Fine. And here we go. Let's run this. So right, remember what this should do. If we have the run signal, this should turn on and for five seconds it should run and then it should sound the alarm and turn off the process. Even so, even if we have done or we undo the run, it doesn't matter. This thing's locked in. We'd have to reset it. So here's a fairly common type of operation that's used in manufacturing, uh, packaging plants, etc. We have a pneumatic cylinder here. That's the body of the cylinder, got the actual cylinder itself. And then this is attached plate out here that can be used to push objects off an assembly line or off a sorting line or something like that. And so the cylinder can move to the right or to the left. And the limits of its motion are defined by limit switches. So these will be the two switches, say. So when it comes it comes to the left and, and strikes this left limit switch, let's call that limit left, or the right switch, which we'll call limit, limit right, uh, then that turns off the motion of the cylinder. Okay? Or, or we program the PLC so that that will turn off the motion of the cylinder. So we know that we've retracted all the way or we've extended all the way, protected all the way to the left or extended all the way to the right. Let's assume we start off by default over in the retracted all the way in contact with the left limit switch. And then we have a, a start button. 
we press that, we want it then to extend the cylinder out until it strikes the right limit switch. And it's gonna stop, and then it's gonna wait for, say, a couple seconds, just let everything clear, and then it's gonna retract. Every time you press the start button, it's gonna go through that cycle. Let's see how we can program this on a PLC. Let's make a new project. Cylinder. Go to resources, local IO mapping. So our input signals then are going to be a um, start command. And we're gonna have um, sensor inputs from the left limit switch so limit l right limit switch right okay so those are our inputs one manual input and two sensor inputs our outputs will be the move right command and the move left command so let's go over to add a new Program. We're going to start off with letter diagram, LD0, assign to the init task. This is where we're going to just set up the initial values of the move left and move right command so that we're not trying to move the cylinder when we first start the PLC up. Get rid of that contact. Let's go over here, a negated coil for move right, and right click to add a new coil parallel for move left negated that initializes signals and a new program put ld1 assign it to fast task and so we first want to start off we assume where the left limit switch is contacted the right limit switch is not and we press start button and that starts to move the cylinder to the right here we'll press start to contact and as long as the left limit switch is also giving a positive value we're in contact with that then we want to start the move right process now, of course it's immediately when we start to move right we lose contact with the left limit switch and that would shut off the move right procedure we don't want that. We're going to put in parallel here, new parallel contact. Let's see, we want the limit, which value to be inside that. Drag it over. And this is going to be a latching operation. So when the move right signal is true, now we open up a new path. As long as we haven't contacted the um, right limit switch, so so if move right is true and the limit right signal is false, then we can keep the move right signal energized and we keep moving to the Okay, let's uh, add a new network. It's a good idea, by the way, to save things and just uh, try to compile it. Let's uh, simulation mode. Okay, let's add a new network after that. Now, once we hit the right limit switch, so this is limit right, once that's true, we want to start a timer during which time the cylinder is not moving, and then we'll retract it, move it back to the left. So let's add a new block, T on timer. Give it the name T on one, and let's preload a time of two seconds, 2000 milliseconds. And so when that, after that time has gone on, we want to set a variable retract. Okay, we can come up here and insert new variable retract type Boolean. And so that's going to start the uh, moving back to the left process. So let's add a new network. Yeah. So when we have retract, We want to start the move left process. Now, because the limit 
r sigma will be true and the limit l is false right the move right signal has already been turned off and will stay turned off we'll wait for two seconds then we'll start moving left now of course as soon as we do that we lose contact with the right limit switch and therefore the retract signal will go to false we could use a set reset type coil but another way is to do just like we did up here with a kind of make a latching operation so let's add in new parallel contact so as long as we're oops as long as we're moving left let's continue to do so until we hit the left limit switch limit left as soon as that becomes true, then we shut off that path. And so this should give us the operations that we want. Let's check that out. F7, five, hold restart. Start that. Okay, now remember we, we want the cylinder, we assume it starts off in contact with the left limit switch. This second input. Okay, so over here, we're starting in contact with the left limit switch. Now if we press start, we should start moving to the right, we lose contact with the left limit switch. Start, let go of the start button. Now we strike the right limit switch. That turns off the move right operation, waits two seconds and then starts moving left. We lose contact with the right limit switch and then we hit the left limit switch and that st stops us. So now we're ready to start again. Right, so let's uh, implement this with function block diagram. Let's first include LD zero, right? That's where we set move right and move left to be equal to zero. Add a new function block diagram program zero to finish. And move left and move right, both zero. So we're going to use the move operator to assign those values. A value of false to move right and another move operation it move left. Um, so also will be false. We go here, move left. Here that is information. Save and compile. Here in the main errors. Okay, now we're gonna go to the fast task and we're gonna re replicate Material with block diagram BD one fast. All right. So the first thing we need to implement here is this operation that the move right signal is start and limit L or move right and not limit R. Go over here. So we're going to have start and limit L. So we need an and. Start. Limit L. And then another, another and, the and between move right and not limit R.
Move right. And then not limit R. So we're actually going to do that. I'm going to hit that with a SOAR gate. So, it's going to be limit right. XORD with true. Now we're going to connect that to the other AND input. And then we're going to OR, right? So that's, that's this AND and this AND with the negation. Now we OR those together. So, new operator. Or here, wire these up. And that output will be the move right signal. And we have, then we need to do this operation. When limit right is true, we start the countdown timer. So, lock on. Put the key on one. So the inputs here are limit right, and then we start counting. And we'll say we count for two seconds 2000 milliseconds and then that should trigger the retract variable up here Retract. that implements this operation now we have this that move left is retract or move left and not limit here and open up a new network okay so we want not limit sorry or not limit left move left and not limit left okay so we want to do the not operation or Uh, limit left here. True. And then that's going to be we're going to do an and with that of that uh, with the move left. This. Left. And then finally, we're going to or that with retract. Or with retract. Fire this. Then that should be move left signal. Okay, so that should implement our operations. File, no errors. Upload or download, I guess they call it. And let's uh, turn it off and run it. Okay, so we start off in contact with the uh, 
go back over here. We got our start signal, left limit switch, right limit switch. We start off in contact with the left limit switch. That's this guy is true. So if we start, then we start moving right. We lose contact with the left limit switch. We let off the start button. And then we eventually hit the right limit switch, stops the move right process, waits two seconds, starts us moving left. We lose contact with the right limit switch. And after a certain time, we come into contact with the left limit switch, and then that shuts things off, and we're ready to start over. 